What? What? Oh, wow! Oh, that's cool! I got a magic butterfly in the water! What? <laughs> that was so cool! It completely glitched! Oh, I got, I'm glad I got to show that off! I, I had no idea that was in the game! Oh, I feel good! Okay, now I'm actually going to call Esker Go Express and do what I would need to do. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jeff, you are powerful, you are mighty, Count Von Jeff. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we went through Dungeon Man's body twice, in order to get a submarine to travel to the Deep Darkness, an area that we have heard of in the legends of the hieroglyphs. And we got the Hawkeye, which will allow us to progress through this area, though we don't exactly know what is here. Well, Ness, Aunt Paulette, and Jeff don't. But me, the player, the veteran of Earthbound, clearly, I know. Uh, but in between episodes, I did some reworking of inventories, as I tend to do every now and then. Uh, first off, I got rid of some of my Cups of Life noodles by giving them to Escargo Express. I also gave him the uh, key to the tower, which I don't need anymore. Uh, not, nothing much with, with Ness's inventory. Not much with Paula's either. They're actually looking kind of, kind of empty, to be honest, and a little bit random. But it's fine, they don't really need that much inventory space. But, Jeff, oh my goodness, this is the best inventory I have ever had for Jeff. In between episodes, I went to Sakuraba and farmed up on the Criminal Caterpillar once or twice, maybe even three times, I'm not sure. I got some level ups for Ness and Paula, but that's not important. The important thing is, Jeff got one IQ, which allowed me to sleep a couple times and repair the Heavy Bazooka, which is an infinite use super bomb. So Jeff has finally, at long last, hit his late game. Throughout the game, he's been in kind of an awkward position where he's always using bottle rockets, and they're powerful, but he's not really that amazing. Nothing about him stands out. As soon as we got the Hungry HP Sucker, he had usefulness. He was an independent party member that uh, didn't need the, his, his allies to heal him up, and he still dealt AoE damage. But now... He deals a ton of AoE damage, and he has the most powerful weapons in the entire game. These deal loads of damage, and since they're the most powerful weapon in the entire game, they're the most powerful weapon that Jeff can get. So, with that, we can progress, we can move on, and be amazingly powerful. So, the Deep Darkness is an area that is black. I could go through here using a map and uh, knowing where to go, but it's a little bit scary to be in the dark. So, let's use the Hawkeye. Paula used the Hawkeye. And now, we can go through the deep darkness without it being incredibly scary. In every video game I have played where I've showed off glitches, especially glitches involving, uh, like, deep abysses where you can glitch through the ground, you guys know that it always sets me off. Like, if there's anything that I would be nervous about in video games, it is glitches like those. Okay, I'm just actually going to use, uh, Teleport Alpha here, uh, and bring it to the deep darkness just to make sure to get past this area. Yeah, I found out that's a really good way to get past things. I dodged an enemy there, and, uh, I cleared a space, so I'm fighting one Zapiel, but otherwise I'd have to fight a couple of them. Okay, let's just show off Jeff's item. Uh, Paula... Paula, you can use, you can use Freeze Alpha, and then Jeff... Oh, boy. Heavy bazooka time! Electrical shock attack! Oh no! Frank LeBadge reflected it! Actually, this enemy might not even be able to get to see the light of day before Jeff can hit it. Hopefully he will! Yeah, okay, heavy bazooka! 310 damage to the Zap Eel! And remember, it's a super bomb, so it will be dealing a bunch of splash damage. That's pretty good! That is really good! But anyway, what I was saying about Teleport Alpha, I've used it a lot uh, just to get past certain areas that I'm not a fan of, so... It's, uh, that's my tip to you guys, I guess, if I was teaching you something, which I, I try to do. Okay, uh, let's see, I can go south here, 
I can go this way. Yeah, that works. Now, if I got some of the piggy noses in um, in Scaraba, there are a bunch of locations where I can find uh, magic truffles. Uh, there are like four or five locations where I can find them, but I get infinite magic truffles. I am not concerned about that. Oh boy. The big pile of puke. Wonderful. So, we have enemies that are essential, essentially Master Belch. Uh, but, just like always, I... Enemies don't really bother me. Earthbound is not a hard game by any means. And I don't have trouble. Especially since I'm kind of overpowered right now. I should be able to kill this thing pretty quickly. Sticky breath. Okay, everyone's crying. That's not bad. I'll just have you bash. You use that. And Jeff, you use uh, your heavy bazooka. Very easy. No damage taken. He's just going to die, right? Mm, there he is. Okay, he's dead. So yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, actually, before I recorded this episode, I had a lot of trouble uh, getting the Wii U to work. It was really weird. I'm not sure if it was the heat, but I think it was something that I did wrong. Uh, okay, uh, let's, see. Look, let's look at the map. I should be able to use teleport alpha. Hopefully, hopefully I don't mess it up and just backtrack. But I think this is this is a good way. I'm skipping a lot just for the cost of two PP. I'm reducing the damage I take. Oh boy. Uh, okay. There's you. Let's go down this way. Take a little bit of damage and hopefully dodge that enemy. But yeah, uh, the Wii U gamepad would not start, which was problematic to uh, to say the least. And so I eventually had to <laughs> consult the the Nintendo guide or the Nintendo user manual. But eventually I got it working. Oh boy. All right, let's just grab this item and let me consult the map just to see where I can teleport Alpha to. Because, like I said, I I did not find this in the guide. I just discovered this when I was doing stuff off screen because I was having to uh, skip across places. What happens if I run into an enemy? That's the only thing I don't know. Uh, I should be able to use this. Also, if I back if this backfires, I'm going to teleport back to the beginning, which is not not good. But I'm just going to kind of use this to skip around. Yeah, like this. Perfect. Oh, boy. Uh, let's use it again. <laughs> this is really fun. Also, it's not... <laughs> I'm kind of being stupid here. Why am I doing this? I'm going to a lot of trouble and using up a fair amount of PP just to do this. But it's it's cool. I just discovered this, and I'm having fun with it. Yes! Look at this. Oh, man. I discovered a new thing about Earthbound. I am the best. Oh, and the camera guy. Okay. Awesome. Jeff's still <laughs> waist deep in that. So if I could give you one tip, it's don't leave the Wii U gamepad plugged into power because eventually it will die. Uh, it wasn't too hard to get it back up and running, but it could damage it, so be careful. Fuzzy pickles! Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. That's true. I have had a lot of fun with this Let's Play. Oh my goodness. It's... I would have to say this is one of the better Let's Plays that I've made. Okay, IQ capsule. Yeah, let's give it to Jeff. I mean, there aren't that many items that he needs to repair, but there is one that I want to get. Jeff took the IQ uh, capsule and he drank it. What if I want? Okay. Uh, looking at my thing, I should, in all honesty, be able to just teleport Alpha. Is that too far, though? I don't think it is. I should be able to teleport Alpha over here, and there's a rock, which I'll hit. Perfect! Ah, oh, my word, that's so fun. Oh, boy. That was kind of bad. Uh, well... Wait. Wait, no, no. I can fix this, guys. I can fix it. Uh, this here. Yeah! <laughs> oh my goodness, this is fun! This is so fun! See you guys. I I have to teleport. You, you guys don't have anything on me. Oh, this is good. How much PP am I using? Like, none. Oh, this is so good. Okay, teleport alpha! One, one of these days, it is going to backfire. So good, though. This area would be taking me much longer if I had to fight these enemies, but I'm avoiding them all, boy. Bulbasaur, Venusaur. How are you doing? Demonic? What is that? Petunia? Petunia? Yeah, Petunia. Uh, okay, you're, you're not that difficult. Uh, I'll just kill you with the powers of the, ma the magics. Powers of the magics. Oh. Took like no damage. Edge closer. 
A lot of damage. Oh, it's dead. Okay. Petunias aren't that difficult. I mean, in real life, I've been attacked by Petunias. Paul's level is now 50. Speed 1 by 1. HP 1 by 2. PP 1 by 2. I've been attacked by Petunias in real life. They're not that bad. And when I say attacked, I mean allergy attacks. Okay, I recognize this helicopter. It's completely broken. I thought I could fix it, but on re-examination, I noticed that there's no engine. Hmm. Well, there's Monotoli's helicopter, so we... Wait. Huh, so, uh, Pokey must have made a quick stop in at Scraba, where he did his business, and then he flew over here. Cup of life noodles inside, like I really needed another one. Okay, looking at my map, I think I should be able to skip across it like this. There's a log right there, but that's not what I'm going to shoot for. Right below the log and to the left, there's a tree. I should be able to... Yes, hit the tree. Man, this, this is fun, and I've never seen anyone do it like this, so, like I said, I, I'm the first person that I've ever seen do this, and it's, it's cool. I discovered something about Earthbound, and it feels good. So many times, I will watch a Let's Play that will get me into a game. I could I could have gone farther than that. That'll get me into a game, but because I watched the Let's Play, like, there's no, there's not that much fun for, in the game anymore. That's one problem I have with Xenoblade. I saw a Let's Play first, so I didn't discover anything. Um, but I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm discovering stuff, and it is a blast. Okay, where should I go? Uh, there's a treasure down here. A souvenir coin. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know what that does. Let's, let's check real quick. Souvenir coin. It is an other, it is an other item, so it will be equipped to other. Gives 80 defense and 35 luck. Not bad. Okay, souvenir coin on Ness. I made a mistake in my inventory and accidentally used my ketchup packet on the banana. I didn't think Ness would be that dumb and actually use ketchup on a banana, but he did, even though obviously ketchup is supposed to be used for expensive mushrooms. Everybody knows that. So I can't use my magic truffle. That's problematic, but I don't I don't really expect a need to uh <coughs> sorry to use that truffle. In case you haven't watched my most recent Alpha Beta Omega, I am actually partially sick right now. I'm getting over a cold. So that's problematic, but it's nothing I can't get over. Uh it just it sometimes I cough in the recording and it's it's not good. I don't like coughing or burping or yawning in the recording, but Sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes I'm sick and I need to record anyway. Jeff's level is now 48. Offense 1 by 1. Defense 1 by 2. Speed 1 by 2. Guts 1 by 2. Vitality 1 by 1. Oh, baby! IQ 1 by 3. Luck 1 by 1. I, I HP 1 by 7. Good level up for Jeff, and it will pave the way for any further items I need to repair on him. Ness opened the present. There's a rock candy inside. Paula takes it. So, this area, the enemies aren't that difficult, and if there are difficult ones that you face, like this one, you could just use a multi bottle rocket on it. But, honestly, I if I were you, I would use uh, a lot of my psychic attacks and other things first, and not the, the multi bottle rockets, because those things are super powerful, and they're overkill for whatever I want to face here. Okay, let's do that. Manly fish. And, Jeff, you use heavy bazooka on the hard crocodile. Because I freeze beta, should do a lot of damage, he'll miss. Jabbed at the spear, did like no damage at all. Did a lot of damage to Ness. Hopefully this will kill the- no, none of them are dead yet. Okay, well this should finish them off. The hard crocodile's one of the more difficult enemies in the area. It deals a lot of damage, but, ah, really, it's not that much at this point. But it still needs to die quickly. There, they're both dead. And Ness, even though he took 160 damage, he's still pretty healthy. 11,000 experience puts Ness to level 54. Offense went by one, speed went by one, HP went by one. All right, we're actually almost done with this area. Um, th we're at the end, pretty much. And once we go through here, we will be at the very end. And then I get to do some other things for a while. But not before we run into a familiar face. You may have forgotten, but burp. I'm the return of Belch. I fought you before. Pew. Don't you remember my ripe odor? Belch has trained more and returned much stronger. Burp. Belch has also changed his name to Puke. Barf. Vomit. Barf. Barf. Chuck. Chuck. Drown to death in puke. Don't you think that's that's an in incredibly masculine taunt to throw at you? 
Master Barf. Now, he loses the, the weakness to Fly Honey, so bringing it along will not help at all. But, uh, there are a couple things that I'd like to do. First is Life Up Alpha, no Beta. Let's use, let's use a Life Up Beta on Ness. Paula, you can defend, because Jeff, um, <clears throat> Why don't you just use uh, one of those multi-bottle rockets just to get to start off the battle? Multi-bottle rocket, one thousand damage. Yeah, one thousand damage. And uh, let's see, bash, bash, bash. This should finish it off, and it does. Suddenly, Poop d swooped down from the sky. Poo used his new power, PSI Star Storm. Poo tried PSI Star Storm Alpha. And it will finish the battle. One multi bottle rocket and a rather stylish attack from Ness and an amazing attack from Pooh will finish it off. And the only damage we sustained is 60 damage to Paula. The enemy left a present. Inside the present was a Casey bat. Paula took it. Paula's level is now 51. Offense went up by 2, speed went up by 1, vitality went up by 1, IQ went up by 2, maximum HP went up by 3, maximum PP went up by 7. Paul realized the power of PSI Shield Beta. Pooh's level is now 43. Uh, offense went up by 1, defense went up by 2, speed went up by 1, HP went up by 1, PP went up by 1. So, the power of a multi bottle rocket and the attack that Pooh just learned. It is called PSI Starstorm Alpha. For the PP cost of 24, it does 360 points of damage to each enemy. Which, essentially, it's uh, Pooh's version of PSI Special, or aka PSI Rockin'. Uh, and the equivalent is that... Yeah, look at this. So, P PSI Starstorm Alpha costs 24 and does 360 points of damage. The closest Rockin' comparison is Rockin' Gamma, which costs PP cost of 40 and does less damage. Well, albeit it does destroy Psychic Shield sometimes, but still. 40 does 320 as opposed to 24 and does 360. So it's a good attack that Pooh just learned. And uh, once I get some bottles of water for Pooh, uh, let's use my shortcut here. Once I get from some bottles of rocket for Pooh, he should be fine. Okay, well, let's use uh, teleport. Go just as a safety net, go to the deep darkness, and let's see, I should be able to go up here and hit these bushes right there. Perfect. And now we're almost at the end. Uh, there are a couple magic truffle spots nearby, but I can't reach them because I don't have piggy noses. Let's just go ahead and use uh, Teleport Alpha to cross this chasm and get to the end. This way. Yes, I actually, I kind of, I kind of uh, gambled there because I almost, I almost teleported to Onet or wherever I set to go. So now we are at the end of the deep darkness. It was pretty easy, and it was aided especially by the use of the broken bazooka and the multi bottle rocket, two amazing items for Jeff. So, this is the end. There are no items nearby, so let's just go through here. This is Tenda Village. I guess the closest comparison would be that of the Saturn Valley, although I actually like these cute little fellas a little bit more. We're shy. This is why, because they're shy. We're shy. And they're just kind of kooky. We don't know what makes them tick, and we've heard some about them. In fact, I didn't know that they used to live in Skaraba. But, uh, we've learned some about them, and not much. Death Ray. Okay, a new item for Jeff, I take it, that I can give him. I also got a, an item for for Ness, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, because we're in Tenda Village, which means I should probably talk about the Tendas themselves. And I'll deal with my inventory in a little bit, because there are no going to be no more battles this episode, so why bother with it now? Let's talk to this fellow. We're all shy. Rumor. I heard a book to fix shyness. There is. Where? Don't know. Just a rumor. We're shy. So they are all very, very shy. So we won't be able to get them unshy until we find a book that will teach them how not to be shy. So they have a predicament. And being the children that we are, we're going to help them in their time of need. We're going to try and find a book that will make them not shy and outgoing. They all, why do we even bother talking? They're all shy. We're shy. So even the store, which is what this is, we won't be able to use because they're all shy. There's only one Tenda who's not shy. It's me, Bubby. You know what? 
there's something scary under that comes from underground. So we covered up the hole. There are lots of dinosaurs there. I went there once, but I came right back because I was so surprised. There was a talking stone that talks a lot. Do you want to go and see? I understand, but I'm not as strong as I look. I'm sorry. I guess I can't help you. The guy next to me is strong, but he lacks conversational skills. He needs to overcome his shyness first. So that is our objective. We're going to be looking for a book that makes the tendas unshy. So there's one thing I can do before we leave Tenda Village, since obviously we need to try to find the book first. There's an inn which I can make use of since I have spent some PP and I can sleep. Now like I said, I won't be dealing with inventory things um, this episode because first of all, no more fights. Second of all, I've already spent a lot of the time in my inventory already. So let's just go ahead and leave and see what life brings about. Hello, it's been a while since we talked. This is Apple Kid. We're having beautiful weather here. I'm now at Dr. Andonet's lab in Winters. The doctor doesn't seem to be around right now, but I'm just working on my eraser eraser machine. Hey! Oh no! What are you doing to me? Who are you? Click. Ness, I haven't talked with you in ages. This is Orange Kid. We're finally coming near to the end of our research on how to change an, a boiled egg back into a raw egg. See, our our money would not be well invested in Orange Kid. By the way, Apple Kid is missing. He left here saying that he was going to see Dr. Andonuts in winter, in winters, and he never came back. I was hoping to borrow the book Overcoming Shyness from him, but suddenly he disappeared. I haven't read the book, so I'm not very good at talking. Sorry. I'm also working hard on my invention, so I hope you'll understand. Say hello to your friends for me. Click. So, it seems uh, Apple Kid has the book that we need, so let's go ahead and teleport to Winters. I think I have enough room here. I better. I mean, I've gotten really good at teleport this episode. So let's go to Winters and see if we can <laughs> crash into a bush. Now let's see if we can, we can help Apple Kid with his predicament, if I can get this lined up right. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but I think that I can do it. Just do this. Ah. Yes, barely. Oh, that was pixels off, but I uh, did it. Pixels away from failing. So we're in winters, but unfortunately, we're going to have to be going back down the long way, since we're not able to travel up via the Skyrunner anymore. So let's go down here and uh, see if we can avoid some of the new enemies that have spawned in the area. And while I do, since we do have time in the episode for me to talk about this, I would like to talk about E3, because while Nintendo didn't have the greatest showing, I took some time to watch the other uh, game companies showing, and I was impressed. There are a couple games that I would like to talk about in particular, as I spam PSI abilities like nobody's business. The first one that really made me interested is The Last Guardian. Now, I don't have a PS4. I don't even have an Xbox One. So, I'm, I'm building up hype for games that I won't be able to get. But still, I'm psyched for these games because I, I'm a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus. Once again, never played it. I saw a Let's Play. Um, I'm a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus, and I found out about The Last Guardian earlier this year, and I was really hyped about it. But then I found out that it was announced a couple years ago, and there hasn't been talk of it since. But finally, it was announced again at E3 with an amazing trailer. Oh my goodness, it knocked my socks off. Nova was even interested, and she'd never even seen anything of Shadow of the Colossus. So if it knocked someone who's never seen the game, if it knocked their socks out, off, you could imagine how much this was like a nostalgia trip for someone who's seen the game or played it. And The Last Guardian, oh my word, looks so good. I can't wait to see it played or maybe get the chance to play it myself. Another game that got, really got me hyped was uh, Horizons Zero Dawn. Oh, whoa. What? Did I just get a bo multi-bottle rocket from an enemy? That has to be a rare drop. Like, 100%, that has to be a rare drop. Okay, let's give this to Jeff. Once again, oh, I can't fit it. Once again, I'll do inventories at the beginning of next episode, just because I don't want to spend a bunch of inventory space or time this episode. Um, but... 
But before I can talk about anything else, Pooh's level is now 44. Oh baby, offense one by four. Oh baby, defense one by three. Speed one by two. Guts one by one. Vitality one by one. IQ one up by two. Luck one up by one. HP one by nine. That rocks. PP one up by nine. Pooh realized the power of Brain Shock Omega. Once again, not talking about it because I've spent enough time this episode in the menus. And I am a free man. Also, I just realized that I am going the wrong way. No, never mind. I, I was wrong. I was completely wrong going the right way. So, back to what I was saying. Horizons Zero Dawn is essentially uh, an apocalyptic Fallout type game, except this is happening maybe a hundred or more years after, fa uh, after uh, the civilization as we know it has fallen. And... Dinosaurs ha are ruling the Earth. This sounds like one of the most crazy games you've ever heard of, but it gets crazier. The dinosaurs are not your typical dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are instead robot dinosaurs. I, you'd have to see the trailer because it, it pieces it together in a very, a very, I guess, minimalistic fashion. It, it's just really good. It, it looks intriguing, and I can't wait to see the idea explored more because it, it just, it intrigues me. A, a, a lot. I can't talk about much of the game just because it's hard to describe, but it's sort of like Monster Hunters crossed with Skyrim crossed with Zelda, I guess? It's very, very bad comparison, but it seems really cool. But still, The Last Guardian is probably my most anticipated game. So, we are uh, at the lake, I believe. Uh, yeah, we're close. Okay, here's the Tessie Watching Club, who's still here, hoping to get a glimpse of the long-awaited Tessie. But I would like to talk to some of the people here first, since uh, Apple Kid being kidnapped probably made some sort of a splash. Where are you, my friend? They came and took you away. Come back, Sebastian. Hey, that's a haiku poem. I love haikus, you guys know that. I finally saw Tessie! It's like seeing a UFO. It emerged from the lake and flew tor towards Stonehenge. It kidnapped one of my friends along the way. Wait. Finally tossed that. It's like you seeing a UFO. Okay. So he's saying that Tessie kidnapped him? Interesting. But he said that one of their friends was indeed kidnapped. Sebastian Chum was kidnapped. Okay, what about you? It's so shocking. He was such a great guy. Now, if we went up to the the boarding house, we would actually find out that Tony is also kidnapped. He's missing. He has some chewing gum. And with this, we can travel across the lake to Tessie, since we wouldn't be able to get to Southern Winters any other way. The Skyrunner is out of commission, and there's no way for us to get to Southern Winters without Tessie. So, Tessie's a good character. She's very cute. And we'll be able to ride on her once again. Now, this episode has been kind of crazy. I jumped into it, and I've been talking about a lot of things because as the game is wrapping up, there are a lot of things to talk about. Things are happening, E3s have flown by, the 25th anniversary of Earthbound, or 20th, has flown by as well. Summerbound is in the midst of being awesome, and Starman.net is expanding. Um, and their, their associates, Fangamer, have raised I believe $2 million for a uh, new Castlevania type game. So things are happening. I got sick and I wasn't able to record and Alpha Beta Omega is blooming into its own series. So there's a lot happening. So I apologize if this episode has been a little bit scatterbrained or scatterwalled or whatever you want to call it. It's just things are happening and it's hard to keep up with them all. But one thing is constant. I'm here and Earthbound is still Earthbound. And I love playing it. I found out a new way to do something this episode. So, uh, because it would just be kind of redundant for me to backtrack, I would just like to skip over to Dr. Anunet's lab, since the only thing I would need to do is just go through here and then the other cave. So, be right back. Ness's level is now 55. Oh, baby! Offense went up by 3, defense went up by 1, guts went up by 1, IQ went up by 1, HP went up by 1, PP went up by 5. Jeff's level is now 49. HP went up by 2. Ah, I'm back at Dr. Annan's lab. I've been waiting for you. My master, Apple Kid, has completed this eraser eraser machine. While he was calling you, he was kidnapped. He felt like this. I was there, but I was helpless. Sorry about that. Anyway, take this machine. 
Paula got the eraser eraser. And we have Ooga Booga Helma help you Waka Ungawa. What would you like? Nothing. I just want to use your power of Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super, which I'm really hyped about, to revive, and then I will show where we're going to be going next episode. Once again, things are flying by. The game is crazy. Nothing is as it seems. As soon as we get to the next village, uh, we're whisked away in uh, excitement and intrigue. <laughs> and <laughs> next episode, we're going to be going down this hole. As you remember, when we were here with Jeff, we went down this hole and there was a very wiggy, crazy thing with enemies that we could not fight because they were blocked by a strange eraser that we weren't able to deal with then, but now we have the magical powers of the eraser eraser which will allow us to ascend by descending down the hole and erasing something that looks like an eraser that might be blocking your way. That was my outro, and that is a great outro for a movie trailer or something. See you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound, where we will do the thing. Bye-bye, yo.